Alrighty, here we are. Hello, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde, and welcome to Transforming the Postcards of Memory. I will pass it to Patrick Leroux to intro the session and today's panelists more fully. But first, I'd just like to say we are so pleased that you could join us in person or online for this event. To situate you, we are streaming on YouTube live from Concordia University's Fourth Space, which is located on unceded indigenous lands in Jojage, Montreal. Nous reconnaissons la nation Kanyankahaga comme gardienne des terres et des eaux sur lesquelles, laquelle nous nous réunissons aujourd'hui. And we make this acknowledgement to bring awareness and understanding of the history of indigenous peoples and their territories, um, and as well as a call to action to rethink one's own relationship with the city, the land and environment. Those of you new to Fourth Space, welcome. We collaborate with our university community to activate the research projects and initiatives in development across the university by co-creating daily activities. To that, that, to that end, we're so pleased to welcome Pablo Grishnik back into Fourth Space. Uh, this afternoon, we had a, a workshop kind of debrief session this morning already. So welcome back, Pablo, and all of the panelists who have joined us, Hannah and Nuria, who are here. I'll leave it to Patrick to introduce everyone fully. So over to you, Patrick. Thanks, Anna, and thank you to the uh, Fourth Space uh, for, for hosting us yet again. Uh, we're back, and we've been uh, consistently here for a year almost. Uh, uh, it's really a pleasure to, uh, to welcome uh, Pablo Gershanik back to, to Montreal and to Concordia specifically, <clears throat> and to um, expand his residency here with us. Uh, um, as, as, as you'll find out, uh, Pablo is also part of a um, um, larger group um, Exhibition, sorry, <laughs> my words were failing. A larger group exhibition at uh, SBC Gallery, uh, Galerie d'Art Contemporain SBC, and, and we'll talk about that in, in a moment. And Pablo is also uh, presenting uh, 52, so the, the world premiere uh, in French and in English, almost simultaneously. Uh, Pablo has been learning the, uh, the both scripts um, <laughs> because the show was created in Italian. Uh, but originally was uh, thought in, in Spanish. So uh, we are in a world of, of languages and migrations. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's a pleasure really uh, today to, um, to, to host this, this conversation also that, uh, that goes beyond uh, uh, Pablo's work. Um, those of you who are interested in it, uh, you can look at the YouTube channel uh, of this morning's uh, presentation of the Intimate Maquette uh, um, methodology. But today we're looking at um, notions of uh, transforming what we call transforming the postcards of memory. Um, so how, how do we connect audience, uh, audiences with difficult histories through various art forms? Uh, how do we propose meaningful ways in, in, in the present to apprehend the unimaginable past? And when I first uh, uh, invited Pablo, um, he immediately wanted to invite uh, the guests that we have with us today. And, and this was uh, um, an instinctive, immediate uh, desire and, and one that I was absolutely happy to, uh, to, to answer. Um, but let me present uh, our, our panelists and, and then we'll get, uh, we'll get started. Um, so uh, Pablo Gershanik is an actor, director, and a professor, a uh, graduate from the École Internationale de Théâtre Jacques Lecoq. He has been an actor touring internationally for Cirque Loise, uh, Compagnie Philippe Gentry, uh, Gentil, uh, sorry, Compagnie Finzi Pasca in Switzerland, and has been um, a theatre director uh, and a co-director of one of the Sept Doigts de la Main uh, Fibonacci projects. He's taught physical theater, clown, and object theater for over 20 years in Mexico, Argentina, and France, and Canada, henceforth. Um, at the National University of uh, San Martin in Buenos Aires, he created and has been directing the specialization in performance and interpretation with masks. He is currently an artist affiliated with uh, Centre uh, 4 Paris and the Cité Internationale des Arts de Paris. So welcome back, Pablo. Um, to his right, uh, in the real, uh, physical, tangible world, because we have virtual participants as well, uh, to his right is Nouria Carton de Gramont. Um, she is an art historian, curator, and lecturer at Concordia University. 
Um, so we'll come back as well. Um, specializing in Latin American and uh, Latin Canadian contemporary art. She has held two postdoctoral fellowships from the Center of International Studies and Research and the Department of Geography at the Université de Montréal, where she also coordinated the research network on Latin America, Real. <clears throat> she has published several articles on Latin American art in the magazines, uh, oh, oh yes, uh, <laughs> I should have practiced this. Um, Arte Diseño. Uh, Arte Diseño, okay. <laughs> And, and, and many, many more. Uh, she's co-edited uh, Politics, Culture and Economy and Popular Practices in the Americas. And as a curator, uh, she presented the Inverto Esparza exhibition uh, at the Galerie de, de Lucan and co-directed uh, the installation of objets obje personnels, personal belongings, objetos personales uh, for the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts as part of the Connections, Notre Diversité Artistique Dialogue avec nos collections. <clears throat> so we are in a multilingual world, as you, as you heard me try to navigate between languages. Uh, she is currently director of the SBC Gallery of Contemporary Art in Montreal, and will be talking to us about the, uh, in other, amongst other things, about the uh, um, collective uh, joint exhibition uh, there as well. So welcome. Um, online. There you are. We have Hannah Claus in Paris, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Hannah is a transdisciplinary artist of Kenyan Kehaka uh, and English heritage who engages in epistemology of hi uh, to highlight ways of understanding and being in relation with the world. She obtained her AOCAD from the Ontario College of Art and Design and her Master of Fine Arts from Concordia University. Um, she, she is a Eitelhorg Fellow in uh, 2019 and the uh, 2020 recipient of the Prix Giverny. Um, she's had recent group exhibitions at the National Gallery of Canada, um, in Indianapolis as well, at the Biennale de l'Art Contemporain Autochtone. Uh, her installations belong to various public collections, such as the National Gallery of Canada, the Eitelhorg Museum, the North American Native Museum, uh, the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts, Global Affairs in the City of Montreal. So concurrent with her studio practice, Claus has been a regular sessional teacher at Kiuna College in Odenac, uh, Quebec from 2012 to 2020. And she is uh, currently a, an assistant professor in frameworks and interventions of indigenous art practice in the studio arts department here at Concordia. Uh, she's been a board member of the Abor Aboriginal Curatorial uh, Collective and currently sits on the board of directors of the Conseil des Arts de Montréal. Um, I could go on. Th th these are people of great accomplishment. And I, I really, uh, really thank you for taking the time uh, to, to be with us. Um, normally, we should also have Yamusa uh, Bangura uh, from Conakry in Guinea. Is, is, uh, is he with us? He's not. Okay, so he might join us. Um, Yamusa is a multidisciplinary artist uh, uh, who started his training in circus uh, within the Ghanaian troupe uh, Circus uh, Baobab. So hopefully he'll be able to join us, uh, but we're not sure about the internet uh, uh, connection exactly. right now. Um, but let's let's get started. So, so perhaps we could start with uh, Nuria. Um, could, could you could you give give us a framework and tell us about the exhibition that you have. Uh, curated, um, what, you, what you're drawing from, and from there we'll, we'll expand. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to switch to French, that's fine for you? Ok, d'accord. Uh, bon, d'abord, avant tout, merci Patrick pour uh, cette invitation, Pablo également, Hannah, c'est un plaisir de t'avoir également ici. Uh, L'exposition, c'est une exposition collective, uh, c'est un travail de longue haleine, c'est une exposition qui a été commissariée par l'équipe de la SBC, donc, je ne suis pas la, la, la seule commissaire, on est un co-commissariat euh, collectif qui a été formé euh, par l'équipe et euh, une étudiante de Concordia à la maîtrise, Olivia Schultz, qui, euh, qui a également été euh, une... Est-ce que c'est bon, vous m'entendez? Ah. Ah, Désolée. Contre, <rire> contre le vêtement. Euh... Experiencing technical difficulties. 
Là, c'est bon? Merci. Parfait. Euh, donc, euh, ça part d'un travail de longue haleine et surtout d'un travail de longue haleine qui a commencé, qui a débuté il y a plusieurs années avec Pablo, justement, pour euh, concrétiser euh, 80 balles dans l'aile. Ici à Montréal, on, on a cherché un moyen d'activer cette pièce qui nous semble absolument intéressante et pertinente aussi dans le contexte actuel. Et c'est à travers ce dialogue qu'on a entamé avec Pablo il y a plusieurs années euh, qu'on a décidé en fait de la mettre en dialogue avec d'autres artistes de d'autres horizons culturels, géographiques, euh, pour euh, justement parler de cette dimension de la mémoire traumatique, du deuil, euh, de comment on processe euh, les expériences difficiles euh, collectivement. Donc, euh, je dirais que l'exposition est, est composée actuellement euh, de quatre artistes, donc Pablo Ferchanik, euh, Gilles euh, Thiel, pardon, euh, Roesken, un artiste suisse mais qui habite en France, euh, qui parle sur les territoires palestiniens. On a également bien sûr Hannah Klaus qui est ici avec nous et puis qui va également euh, approfondir sur son travail, sur sa collaboration dans l'exposition. Et on a également euh, Joe euh, Radcliffe, une artiste de l'Afrique du Sud, qui parle sur euh, l'impact en fait, de l'apartheid euh, dans la région. Donc, c'est une exposition, euh, je dirais, multisituée. Euh, une, euh, une exposition aussi interdisciplinaire, c'est-à-dire que euh, conformée par des installations, euh, par des vidéos, euh, des photographies et euh, par euh, une activation qu'on est très heureux d'avoir et que je profite ici pour inviter tout le monde. Vendredi prochain, c'est 80 balles dans l'aile qui va être activé euh, grâce à, à, à tout un travail d'équipe qui se fait actuellement <rire> de montage. Et donc, on est très heureux d'accueillir Pablo pour euh, cette activation. Dans quelle langue? Non, je je you vais pas ça en anglais, donc... Vous pouvez aller, vous savez, dans ce que vous sentez. Very Montreal moment. Yes. Uh, the, the Montrealers will tend to uh, switch into the language the other person is more comfortable with. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to balance things out. Um, what do you mean by activating an installation? What does that mean exactly? Here, Pablo, I will need your help. <laughs> On a donc, c'est un dispositif installatif, la maquette, et donc je vais laisser Pablo, et sûrement Pablo qui l'a déjà expliqué dans, dans, dans les dernières rencontres que vous avez eues avec les étudiants ce matin. Mais donc, c'est un dispositif installatif qui est dans l'espace, une maquette qui représente la plata où on trouve plusieurs éléments de cette histoire euh, euh, difficile. Et euh, ce n'est pas seulement une installation qui va projeter une vidéo qui raconte l'histoire, c'est-à-dire que le public, après de cette activation, va pouvoir avoir une réverbération, si vous voulez, de cette activation. Mais le jour de l'activation, donc, Pablo va revenir sur cette histoire et va activer cette maquette qu'en fait, alors euh, du coup, pour entendre bien, c'est une maquette vivante. C'est une maquette vivante avec des personnages, avec une histoire, avec une géographie très précise. Et, euh, et c'est justement ça qu'on qu 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 veut entendre. So, so a, a theater maquette, uh, which is material, uh, becomes immaterial and, and, and alive as soon as the artist engages with it and invites the audience in to engage as well. Pablo, would you like to talk a bit about the, the maquette itself and, and the, uh, how does one activate it and how do we as, as, as spectators engage with it in these, in these two, two relationships, basically? There's the relationship we'll have on, on the vernissage, on the opening night, uh, the, you know, you, either art world speak or, or theater world speak, um, but there's also a different relationship that the audience will have with the, with the maquette when you're not there to explain it and to walk us oh. through. Je vais continuer pour garder la tradition, je vais continuer un peu en français. C'est bon, en français, ça va? Oui. Et, um, comme, comme on s'était dit ce matin, le, le processus autour de la maquette a été en principe un processus d'une recherche personnelle, d'une histoire euh, pleine de petits fantômes et des grands fantômes, et la question de comment reconstruire, comment on pouvait, à partir d'un dispositif esthétique, travailler sur ces, cette notion de reconstruction, de reconstruction symbolique. 
la question de s'y reconstruire impliquait quelque part à la façon d'un archéologue la possibilité de revenir sur une image des bases d'une expérience vécue de façon brutale, ou si le fait de reconstruire, c'était aussi le fait de se reconstruire, de raconter ou de se raconter l'histoire d'une autre façon. Ou c'était un peu le mélange entre les deux, entre la possibilité d'aller à la rencontre de cette espèce de ground zero et en même temps la possibilité d'ajouter une couche de fiction autour de ça. Cette première expérience des quatre albales dans l'aile a été une expérience dans un musée qui est le musée de la mémoire, qui est un espace assez emblématique en Argentine, parce qu'il est le principal camp de concentration des Amériques. Pendant la dictature militaire que l'Argentine a subie dans les années 70, cet espace a été un peu le centre d'opération de, de la répression anti-tout. Anti, anti anti-communiste, anti-droit, anti-femme, anti-tout. Anti et donc, le fait de récupérer cet espace pour le faire devenir un musée de la mémoire, pour moi, était assez pertinent, symbolique. Quand je reçois l'invitation de ces musées pour résider pendant deux mois dans un camp de concentration et répondre à travers une pièce, la première chose pour moi, c'était justement de me nourrir un peu de tout ce qui était autour pour pouvoir imaginer mon histoire dans ces contextes-là. Mais pas seulement mon histoire, mais de commencer à comprendre qu'une histoire personnelle n'était pas une histoire personnelle, mais une histoire sociale. Qu'autour de cette histoire, il y avait toute une énorme quantité d'événements qui étaient en simultané et qui avaient lieu à ces moments-là. Donc, pour moi, la question de « au même temps que ta vie change pour toujours », qu'est-ce qui se passe dans le même pâté des maisons, dans le même quartier, dans la ville, dans d'autres villes, dans le pays, dans d'autres pays, au niveau d'une toute petite vie quotidienne et en même temps des grands événements historiques, des grands événements épiques, au niveau de la présence sonore d'un monde visuel, des de la radio, le cinéma, la télé, de la publicité, de la musique de ces jours-là, des discours politiques, de toute la couche visuelle d'une ville autour, la, les propagandes, les, les, la publicité, et tout ça mélangé avec les histoires personnelles, les, les, les grands événements, les guerres qui avaient lieu à ces moments-là, les, 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 les grands mouvements de l'art, enfin. Tout ça pour finalement me dire, OK, autour de cette expérience qui est une maquette, mais comme une maquette, une construction à échelle d'une expérience vécue, et m'a amené quelque part à dialoguer avec les gens qui approchaient cette maquette, des gens qui avaient vécu l'expérience de la torture dans cet espace-là, des gens qui connaissaient l'histoire et s'approchaient, etc. Donc, encore une fois, la, la possibilité de constater qu'une histoire personnelle n'est pas une histoire personnelle, mais une histoire sociale. Et puis, à partir de, 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 de cette notion aussi, l'effet de me rendre compte qu'il fallait, pour présenter cette maquette, dépasser une première peau muséographique et rentrer dans une peau de dialogue en direct. Le fait d'être présent en disant « voici une histoire dont j'ai envie de vous raconter », et c'était très marquant. Et c'est à partir de là que je me suis rendu compte que la figure d'un narrateur, d'un activateur, comme dit Nouria, était centrale, c'est-à-dire la maquette comme comme on, on, on a dit, raconte un jour de 1975 à La Plata, une petite ville à côté de Buenos Aires, mais en même temps, de façon un peu chorale, de façon un peu symphonique, toute une autre quantité de choses qui ont lieu en même temps. Tout ça, quelque part, pour moi, travaille sur, sur ce qu'on a essayé aussi de nommer au moment où on a nommé cette table de discussion, et que c'est la question... D'abord, de la carte postale, c'est-à-dire une image qui semble être fixe, sans bouger, qui remonte à un passé idyllique, à une vision d'un endroit très utopique, très idyllique, mais qui en même temps se transforme, parce que la mémoire se transforme tout le temps. On est dans un contexte, bah, on vient de passer de l'anglais au français, on va repasser à l'anglais, on parlait d'une culture hybride, d'une culture métisse, dont je pense qu'il qu y a aussi l'invitation à à dialoguer autour de ça avec Han, avec Yamoussa, avec nous et avec toi, c'est quelque chose autour de... Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire aujourd'hui, dans un temps comme le nôtre, d'une migration extrême, de tous ces mouvements-là, des langues, des cultures, de refonder des territoires symboliques Donc autour de qu'est-ce qui implique aujourd'hui la possibilité d'ailleurs, de l'endroit 
d'où on vient à l'origine, et refonder un territoire qui dépasse la notion des nations, qui dépasse la notion de géographie, mais qui vient fonder quelque part un territoire autre. Et, et pour moi, la question, pour commencer un peu à dialoguer avec, euh, avec vous tous, c'est ça, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire aujourd'hui Or, d'un espace du foyer, mm -hmm. la possibilité de se réinventer symboliquement autour des autres et avec les autres, à, à la rencontre avec des autres. C'est essentielle question. Euh, refonder des territoires symboliques post-nationaux. Um, I've been trying to uh, translate that in my mind to, to re reinstate, not reinstate, to repurpose, to uh, fund, found a new uh, symbolic territories. Um, and language brings brings with it uh, various uh, travails as well. Response. Uh, and, and various emotional responses, uh, absolutely. Uh, I'd like to um, address Hannah. There you are. Uh, Hannah, um, so your, your work in the context of this exhibition, um, I'd be curious, I guess you're not here to, to engage and respond with the, with the other artists' uh, work yet. Um, but, but I'd like to hear how you're coming to this um, um, to this exhibition. So it's titled "Under the Under the Reign of Others," um, a group exhibition that examines the post-traumatic process from <clears throat> from the political and uh, social reconstitution uh, of grief. Um, how are you addressing this? And, and you're a, a visual artist, um, so I'd be curious to to understand what the medium is and how the medium brings you to to address these uh, these questions sure um vous voulez que je parle en français ou en anglais do i do it in english or french <laughs> it's up to you we, we've been going back and forth uh, okay maybe... i'll 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 maybe balance out with english then for a bit but i'm happy to do it in french as well uh, my installation is picking up on something it's kind of reconstituting something that i worked on throughout the summer of 2017 with Les Fenêtres qui parlent, which is, um, I guess, sort of like a, a neighborhood community sort of event or celebration uh, where art is put into different windows of houses on uh, on a certain block, a certain street in, in Montreal, La Rue Marquette. For that summer with I, the different anniversaries going on with Canada and Montreal, I think it was with the Montreal anniversary, uh, there was a, a larger a larger envisioning of this sort of neighborhood festival to all of the quartiers, the arrondissements that make up Montreal. So um, art went into the windows of, of different, uh, different houses throughout the island of Montreal for, the, for all of one summer. I was one of the artists and uh, I chose to work with the um, sort of text-based messages, uh, words coming from missing and murdered indigenous women, their families taken from media online articles and uh, had these displayed in the windows uh, of houses. So these are now reformed into an installation uh, that's a part of this exhibition. They're in English and French and uh, are also mounted with banners, textile sort of banners that are dyed with sumac um, that uh, is kind of a, a reddish pinkish dye. Uh, and that uh, that's my that's my exhibition. That, that's my installation. So I think it does relate well to the idea of, of voices, certainly of, of grief and loss um, with, uh, with the work that's going to be shown in the, in the, in the exhibition. Right, and it also, um, it also connects to this, this idea of um, the, the, personal, the personal trauma, the personal grief, also uh, being expressed collectively, and, and you certainly by drawing on these uh, on these different voices um, um, presented that very explicitly. I'd like to hear um, what what the I guess process was as you went from the um, the ambulatoire uh, type uh, 
uh, exhibition initially with the with the text in the windows to a more focused one. Um, what 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 happens as you as you work through that uh, that process? Do you uh, do you rethink the very nature of the uh, of the installation work? Um, is there a certain amount of editing happening? Uh, I'm just curious to know what your process is. Well, I think uh, part of it was um, unrolling all of these different banners uh, that had been rolled up for so long, bringing them out and putting them on my studio wall and just the impact of all of those words coming together on the wall. It was just so very strong that I felt that they really needed to be kept together uh, like that. It, it ends up going floor to ceiling. So sort of 10 feet, 10 feet high and about 19 feet, uh, 19 feet long uh, in the space, sort of the first half of the gallery. And um, I think there, there was some editing. It was really just to make it fit in the space that I was allocated <laughs> within, the, within the gallery. But at the same time, it, um, it remains very strong to, to, see those, to see those words, to see those, those feelings um, written on the wall. Were you, were you tempted to sorry, were you tempted to uh, contribute some of your own words or did you uh, as well uh, write uh, from yourself on, on this uh, exhibition uh, no these were very directly the words from often members of the families who uh, have missing daughters granddaughters aunts sisters um, they I felt strongly that I wanted it to be their voices with yeah. this. Uh, to me, that that's that's important to make room for for their voices. And is there a moment of engagement uh, with with the people who have written those words? For instance, do you do you reach out to them? Do you, do you, do you invite them to the uh, to the exhibition? How does that work? Oh, well, in this instance, it really was taken from different articles, uh, news reports. Uh, so, so no, I didn't have personal interaction with people. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Nouria, oui. you, uh, which language, I'll ask the question in English. Yeah. Yes. Um, so as you, as you navigate through these, these uh, multiple singularities, uh, the, you know, the, you, you're talking, you talked about, uh, um, uh, multi uh, situated, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is interesting. Situated not not just geography ge geographically, uh, but also in terms of uh, the artist discourse and, and the artist position within uh, within their own disciplines. As you navigate through these different forms, um, what is uh, ultimately, uh, or what was uh, what you were looking for? Um, and, and, and what did you find? Ouais. Those are two different questions. C'est une bonne question et puis je vais je vais peut-être reprendre euh, euh, ce que tu ce que tu euh, disais, Hannah, cette cette idée de un peu de, de la négociation de l'espace euh, dans la galerie, de l'espace d'exposition, l'espace curatorial, euh, mais je dirais aussi de la négociation de de, de l'espace euh, et du paysage, du territoire, de comment le territoire est en fait imprégné de ces histoires. Donc je pense que une des choses qui était importante de cette exposition, euh, bien sûr, c'est euh, le processus post-traumatique et comment l'art, d'une certaine façon, va désamorcer euh, euh, collectivement et avec un processus, disons, qui s'approche à l'affect non collectif de reconstitution de cette, de cette mémoire. Mais de l'autre côté, ce qui est intéressant pour nous, et puis euh, euh, l'œuvre de Hannah dans ce sens euh, est, est aussi très, très particulière, parce que c'est cette dimension de l'espace, comment, comment on restitue cet espace traumatique également, et comment on peut euh, le, le ré-symboliser d'une certaine façon. Donc toutes les pièces que vous allez trouver dans l'exposition en justement ce dialogue avec une géographie de la violence, si vous voulez, mais aussi une géographie, euh, je dirais, de la réconciliation 
ou de la restitution. Euh, Pablo, tu parlais euh, de la reconstruction symbolique de cette archéologie personnelle et collective, de cette refondation du territoire symbolique. Donc, je pense que c'est quelque chose qui se trouve dans toutes les pièces et qui également nous intéressait euh, collectivement. Donc, cette idée de l'espace négocié, de l'espace de la mémoire comme un espace négocié. Un espace négocié entre la petite histoire avec un, non, ou la micro-histoire ou l'expérience personnelle intime du vécu. Et de l'autre côté, cette, cette macro-histoire, cette histoire euh, euh, avec un grand H, euh, une histoire dans laquelle on, on, on va d'une certaine façon aussi euh, mettre en question cette idée de vérité. Quelle est la vérité des actes et des actions non cette histoire officielle. Donc, il y, a, il y a aussi également un dialogue, je vous dirais, euh, dans chacune des œuvres, donc chacune des euh, situations particulières, culturelles, géographiques, que chaque, chacun des artistes met en valeur. Il y a également ce dialogue, cette négociation qui est toujours constante. Et, et vous avez euh, évoqué donc euh, cette notion, vous avez évoqué cette notion donc de la restitution, la, la reconstitution, mais aussi de la réconciliation. Absolument. Uh, les, les trois airs. Um, so, so in restituting, reconstructing and, and seeking um, reconciliation through, through, through this uh, uh, series of artworks, um, you're, you're bringing about a, di a real dialogue, but also for, for us as we'll walk through uh, SBC Gallery, Uh, we'll be seeing different uh, traumatic collective experiences as well. So, so from South Africa to to uh, Peron's Argentina to uh, to North America mm -hmm. with the First Nations uh, uh, experience and the Palestinians mm -hmm. as well. So, mm -hmm. um, how 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 do you hope um, the the spectators, the uh, art uh, consumers, <laughs> to put it correctly, uh, how, how do you expect them to to respond to this and and mm -hmm. What what is what is the possible outcome? What what are the possible actions that, that you hope eventually from uh, from this experience? That's an, a very interesting question, Patrick. Uh, je pense que um, l'objectif uh, principal c'est uh, je pense que je reviendrai à cette idée de l'activation, cette activation de la mémoire que Pablo fait de, de, non de, depuis une perspective personnelle du vécu uh, de cette installation. Mais je pense que l'objectif pour nous, euh, au niveau, euh, je dirais, muséal, institutionnel, c'est bien sûr c'est de mettre aussi en valeur cette activation de cette mémoire collective avec le public. Comment le public peut participer à la construction et à la reconstitution de ce territoire, non euh, qui est la mémoire, ce territoire vaste. Euh, on, on, en fait, on part de l'œuvre de euh, d'un poète et journaliste euh, argentin, Juan Kielman. Qui, euh, qui a participé euh, à la dictature et qui a écrit un texte qui s'appelle euh, « euh, Under the Rain of Others » en anglais, euh, « Sous la pluie des autres »,« Bajo la lluvia ajena euh, », un texte qui est iconique parce que c'est un des textes qui a euh, dénoncé pour la première fois les abus euh, commis au cours de la dictature de, de, en Argentine, un texte qu'il écrit en Rome quand il est exilié. Et donc, pour nous, euh, c'était un peu partir de cet imaginaire, euh, de cet imaginaire dans lequel, lui, il, euh, il mentionne la mémoire, ce n'est pas une action, ce n'est pas seulement un processus, mais c'est une action collective que tout le monde doit participer, tout le monde doit se l'approprier. Donc, je pense que pour nous, c'est ça, c'est activer cette mémoire avec le public, activer le dialogue, bien évidemment. Et, et Pablo, euh, si, si on revient... Si on revient donc. Euh... <coughs> non, problème technique. Euh, C'était moi. Euh, si on revient donc à cette. Euh, comment dire Oh, in English. Um, you, you come from the theater, you come from circus practice, and yet uh, you answered uh, pretty enthusiastically and fully. Um, a commission from uh, the Museum of Memory. So from the start, this work was uh, framed, contextualized in a museum space. Um, not necessarily an art museum, but a, a sort of so social uh, and, and political uh, space. This, this initial piece, which was a maquette, which you uh, 
as you explained, uh, blew up into a, a not not quite a, a life uh, sized, uh, but but certainly a scaled uh, scaled down version of um, uh, la, la Playa, um, then becomes activated in the gallery and then comes back to a performative theatrical um, entity, which we'll see uh, next week uh, uh, in fifty two. What is the process and what are the what what did you discover with each step of this way uh, of this pathway uh, as you went from a personal um, memory and and uh, 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 très intime et, et enfoui uh, vers quelque chose d'extériorisé um, et on ne peut plus extérioriser et assumer finalement la toute fin parce que tu es sur scène seul, tu joues donc le, le, le personnage qui, qui retrouve donc cet univers de maquette. I I come from theater and and the first thing that I realized by doing this model is that the only way to talk with Hamlet's ghost father is to have it out from you, outside from you. You need to get this step back in order to be able to, to talk to your ghosts in a way. Mm -hmm. so, so the first thing that, that happened to me was this idea of reconstructing, but not just reconstructing, but also we, we are trying to, to look for the, the right word. Is it activation? Anim and, and for me, it's animation. And, and here we have a, an expert of, of the work with puppets and with with objects, which is Mark Sussman, and and this idea of animation for me is is is, is very is very important. Which is in in Spanish we have this idea of animación, which means mm -hmm. bringing soul to something, to an object that is not alive at the beginning, so to say. So what do we need to to take the essence of this object in order to make him have a soul? And for me. That was something related to, to this model. I, I had to, to deal with my father's story, who was not there anymore, and who was obviously an indelible mark in my, in my story. But, but by, by having this model, my father's size, 1 meter 84 plus 1 meter 84, I, I, I also had the possibility of placing him there and me stepping back to create a playground, to create a space where humor was possible, where with this kind of detachment, where this kind of metaphoric approach to not just to the story that happened, but to the way I used to relate and to narrate that story. So, so my first discovery was, OK, narration is not a stiff universe. It's not something that is a postcard a fixed postcard. We can play with that. We can play not just with the event, but the way we approach to that event. And by doing that, the thing is that it's not just going to change your personal aspects and your personal approach to the thing, but it also creates another kind of bridge that is not necessarily a bridge based in trauma mm -hmm. with the others. It's a, it is a bridge that, that has an aesthetic veil and through that veil, through that metaphor, this idea of intimacy. Once again, going to this idea of intimacy as something that is a result of two universe meeting. This third universe that is your universe and mine together creating this common intimacy is what, what for me is basic in, in, in this first uh, space. Because I also had the chance to, to have people that I didn't know coming to say, in this cafe, I used to do that, that, and that, that. And this place is something that is important for me. And I lived torture in this place, and blah, blah, blah. And I was the nurse of your father. My father was a doctor. I was the nurse of your father. He brought me to the world. He was my pediatrician. So stories that, that are much longer beyond my personal story. So to understand that the thing for me was to, to bring like a tool to create the, the, this discussion. Let's let's create like a common space. So to start discussing, yeah, it has to do with my life. Yes, of course, but it has to do with a generation. It has to do with a continent. It has to do with a, a universe of migrations of of 
utopias of a generation that tried to change the world and what happened later. And mm -hmm. so, so today, I think it's very actual in, in that way, which is we don't come to say anything, but we come to have a common experience. And that's for me, the, 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 also the role that has this idea of activation. And, and that's something we are discussing now with Noria, which is now we are going to activate that we are going to animate the model. But in, in some weeks, it's going to be on his own, on its mm -hmm. own. Yeah. So what's, and we're, we're thinking, what tools can we develop to still have this presence, to still have this, this other human being gazing you to your eyes and saying, this is a story I want to tell you. Right, so the, the installation is basically going to con constantly evolve with people's interactions. So this is uh, very interesting. Um, will, is there any way of documenting that? Uh, uh, maybe uh, someone in the gallery taking note of how people interact? Or I, I'm, yeah, and, I, I'd be curious to see where this can go. And there's something interesting with, with installation that is this city is visited by a train, by an ele a little electric oh, right. train that yeah. has a camera and it's shooting, it's filming all the time and projecting first in the concentration camp's walls and now in our lovely SBC gallery, mm -hmm. we, we will have all, all the time with this kind of record, which is also a kind of gesture, aesthetic gesture, because the, the frame that the camera has includes the audience. Right. So, so to say to the audience, by projecting this city, this kind of tiny Lilliputian city with the images of the audience is also to say you are you are part of the dialogue you are, mm -hmm. you are inside and is that recorded because that be can become another video installation that can uh, feel something else <laughs> we'll ask to the train to record that <laughs> <laughs> Not to be determined so so you you evoke something um i think essential in that your initial uh, creation of of this maquette in a context where people uh, have experienced, uh, you know, not exactly what you have experienced, but similar uh, with, with similar experiences, uh, could engage with the maquette uh, to jog their own memories and their own their own traumas. In this case, you'll be presenting um, a very particular experience in Montreal, so very far from Chile. Mm -hmm. um, how how do you? Uh, maybe I, I should ask uh, Nuria the question. Um, how do you expect and hope that people will respond? Uh, to, to this very foreign yet proximal um, proposition. Uh, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, J'ai l'impression que um, <laughs> on, est, on est vraiment dans, dans la dimension personnelle, uh, dans une dimension collective, bien évidemment, mais, mais j'ai l'impression que chacune des personnes connecte avec, des, avec ces histoires dépendamment de leur propre vécu personnel. Donc, il n'y a pas de formule, il n'y a pas de, 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 de recette par rapport à ça. Je pense que c'est savoir avec vraiment un, un engagement personnel, affectif, très, très intime euh, et comment donc on décide de se connecter collectivement par rapport à ça. Mais, mais je voudrais revenir à, à cette idée de, 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 bon, du dialogue, de, de la connexion avec les autres, comme, comme cet imaginaire de créer une empathie, euh, une, une, une vision empathique, « empathic vision ». Euh, une, une, une expérience commune, collective, donc justement avec les œuvres de chacun des artistes, chacune des artistes, euh, on, on, on va vivre une réverbération personnelle, particulière, euh, chacun des membres du public, les personnes qui, euh, qui sont plus proches, par exemple, des réalités autochtones, avec la pièce de Hannah Klaus, euh, bien sûr, une, une, une identification euh, qui serait peut-être plus personnelle, euh, des personnes, bien sûr, de la diaspora latino-américaine, qui, qui vivent ici au Canada également, de, de la diaspora palestinienne, de l'Afrique du Sud, ou du racisme systémique, tout simplement, tout court. Euh, je pense que ça, ça, ça fait partie de, de justement de ce dialogue qu'on veut mettre en place. Euh, également, je voulais revenir à une notion euh, qui, qui, qui est lancée par différents théoriciens qui travaillent sur justement cette idée de « curating difficult knowledge ». On a des experts ici à Concordia, dont Erika Lerner, qui, euh, qui travaille notamment sur le sujet, Cynthia Milton, et euh, qui parle justement du public comme un, un public euh, qui, 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 qui devient euh, un « memory workers mm », -hmm. euh, des travailleurs de la mémoire, euh, « emprendedores de la memoria » en, en espagnol. 
Et, et j'ai l'impression que c'est justement dans cette logique que euh, nous, 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 nous attendons, nous espérons en tout cas semer <rire> non, la curiosité du public pour, euh, pour venir voir cette exposition et pour euh, la, euh, appréhender sa, sa propre expérience, son propre vécu. I'd be curious to hear uh, Hannah um, uh, speak, speak to this notion of the, the memory worker, um, the, because you're drawing on all these uh, external voices. Um, could you tell us a bit about this? And, and, and also, um, how, how far uh, do you feel you can go uh, when you're uh, tapping into these um, external perspectives as an artist, as a curator? Um, well, I guess uh, I'd say that I feel like um, what Nuria just said about curating difficult knowledge sort of resonated with me. Um, I think that one of the ways that maybe this exhibition does it and that I sometimes do with my work is uh, sometimes the difficult things are easier to access, uh, for the viewers to access with a through art because of a certain level of aestheticization uh, of aesthetics. So for example, the, the title that is so poetic that was chosen, um, the, the, the sort of materiality or, or, or the, the touch um, with my, With my my banners, my my signs, the words they're uh, hand drawn with with charcoal. So there's like the, the the touch of hands. You can see sort of the marks of hands within it that that gives it a level of uh, personalization uh, and I think individuality. It brings the person into it more than just say cold text on the page or or on the news in that sense. So I think. I think that might be sort of one of the strategies that um, that is at work in the exhibition to help people engage with the with the work uh, on a certain level, and then hopefully we'll get them curious to go further further into to these topics um, on their own when they when they come away from that. And the um, uh, charcoal on on fabric is uh, ephemeral ultimately. Uh, is this uh, is this something that you're exploring as well? The the fact that over many weeks uh, we'll, we'll see it less and less clearly. Uh, ephem ephemerality is something that I I always use in my in my installations. The idea that things aren't meant to to last forever ever. Time is is a factor within the work that I do. It's it's a process. It starts as a process and it continues on to end as a process. Yeah. Mm. It's like with memory. <laughs> it, exactly. It, yes. <laughs> it eventually dissipates uh, in one way or another, but it can be reactivated and, and certainly re reconstituted yeah. as uh, as we as we've seen. Um, so, so to um, I guess to sort of re refocus on the uh, on the exhibition that, that that's that's coming up. Um, We, there are missing voices around the table, uh, so, so I, I, maybe if you, you, you wouldn't mind, Nuria, uh, giving us a, a very brief description of the, the other pieces as well, to give us a sense of um, um, what, we'll, what we'll see uh, when, when we get to the gallery, and those of us who can, uh, who Absolutely. are in Montreal. Yeah. Oui, euh, donc comme j'expliquais euh, tout au début, donc euh, bien sûr vous allez euh, vous allez rentrer dans, dans une dimension très particulière, un espace, alors je reviens avec cette idée multisituée, euh, où on rencontre donc ce dialogue entre différentes pièces, euh, notamment euh, celle de Hannah Klaus, et donc aussi, je dirais, interdisciplinaire, euh, ce, qui, ce qui est vraiment très intéressant également, de voir comment chacun des artistes s'est approprié justement de leur propre méthodologie, de leur propre langage euh, pour activer donc, ce dialogue. Euh, donc euh, la pièce de Hannah euh, qui est une pièce installative euh, et, et, et donc à nouveau qui revient sur cette dimension aussi dans, dans, cette, dans ce vécu je dirais de, de cette première présentation qu'il a fait dans, avec les fenêtres qui parlent euh, à mmh. l'événement donc communautaire euh, à petite échelle mais vraiment très euh, je dirais puissant 
euh, dans, à son échelle et, et donc euh, qui, qui était pour nous très intéressant de, de, de ancrer donc une installation qui était pensée pour l'espace public avec ce dialogue avec une communauté très particulière à Montréal et donc le faire vivre à nouveau puis l'activer dans un contexte muséal euh, d'un côté. De l'autre côté, on retrouve donc la pièce de Pablo dans cette installation euh, qui, euh, qui, qui Pablo a déjà a expliqué la nature et donc avec cette, cette composante de, de performatique. Et on a euh, deux autres pièces qu'on est vraiment très content d'avoir. Euh, Til Roesken, euh, donc c'est une vidéo qui, euh, qui a été tournée en, en 2009 euh, dans, dans un camp, euh, un camp de, 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 de réfugiés en, en Palestine, donc un territoire conflictif, un territoire entre la Palestine et l'Israël, euh, euh, où en fait euh, Til est, est, est rentré en dialogue avec... Euh, avec les habitants de ce quartier et puis à filmer euh, leur narration sur l'espace où ils habitent. Euh, sans, on ne voit pas les faces, on ne voit, on voit, on voit, on voit pas le visage, euh, on, on écoute juste la voix et on, 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 on voit comment ces, ces, ces différents acteurs réinscrivent ce territoire, le racontent et le dessinent. Donc c'est vraiment un rapport très, très intime également sur ce vécu. Et finalement, on a euh, une installation vidéo euh, de, euh, de Joe euh, Radcliffe, euh, Radcliffe, une artiste de l'Afrique du Sud, qui travaille sur euh, cette dimension, l'impact de l'apartheid euh, en Afrique du Sud, notamment dans une ferme euh, Black Place, donc ça c'est le nom aussi de la, de la pièce, Black Place, euh, 2 June euh, 19, euh, 1919. Euh, « Drive by Shooting », ça c'est le nom de, de, de l'installation. Et euh, donc cette ferme en fait qui était un espace de, de répression en fait sur des militants anti-apartheid. Donc elle, euh, à travers de cet imaginaire aussi de l'absence et la présence, je pense que c'est quelque chose qu'on qu a, on a, on a peut-être manqué de, de, euh, de mentionner dans cette dimension de la reconstitution de la mémoire, comment on est toujours dans cette dimension de l'absence du fanta euh, fantasmagorique, de la hantise du passé qui nous rattrape, non, d'un côté, et, euh, et de l'autre côté, donc, comment cette hantise nous permet, donc, justement, de, 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 de reconstruire, de restituer un présent à travers de cette mémoire collective. Donc, voilà. Merci. Et, et est-ce que, est -ce que cette mise en commun, cette, euh, ce, ce dialogue, finalement, de, de diffère, différents univers, euh, euh, selon votre expérience, euh, euh, donne lieu à, à de nouveaux projets, à des, des dialogues entre artistes. Is this something that you're hoping that the artists will um, engage with each other's work as well? And because you're you're creating a space essentially of um, individual um, aesthetic art making practices born from from individual or collective trauma. Uh, but you're also looking at models of resilience and you're also looking at uh, a truly interesting and, and rich um, social interaction uh, between between the, the art practices and the artists themselves. Is this something that you envisage that will actually uh, perhaps happen? Or, or are the artists solitary in nature? <laughs> <laughs> Non, je pense que, je pense que euh, euh, le dialogue est, est là, le dialogue est construit, c'est vraiment, euh, je pense que ça c'est la nature du travail curatorial qu'on a fait, donc c'est vraiment de, 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 de cette mise en valeur de chacune de ces pièces et comment et leur donner sa place, négocier cet espace, euh, et je pense que bien évidemment avec différentes activations comme celle-ci qu'on est en train de, de réaliser actuellement, justement avec, avec Hannah, euh, Pablo, euh, Yamoussa, bon que finalement il n'a pas réussi à, à, à se joindre à nous, avec toi, Patrick, bien évidemment. Euh, je pense que ce sont des manières différentes d'activer de, de cet espace. Mm -hmm. Je voudrais tout simplement finir avec une phrase que, que j'ai recueillie de Elisabeth Jelin, qui est une, une pionnière sur les études de la mémoire, justement, qui disait euh, que la condition nécessaire pour la construction de la démocratie est une politique active de la mémoire, où on, tous, on participe tous et toutes. Donc, euh, voilà l'objectif. Donc c'est une interpellation euh, très directe euh, auprès du public. So, audience members, we are being called upon uh, to to engage with these works and to 
to contribute to the work um, on these uh, individual and collective memories. I'd, I'd like to open up for a, a bit of a conversation. Since we we wow. have people online and, and in the in the room. Um, Luis, would you like to intervene? Yeah. I, maybe, uh, do we have an extra mic anywhere? You can come and sit. Yeah. Thank you. So may maybe present yourself briefly. Thank so. you. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, very pleased to be here with you all and to welcome uh, Pablo here in Montreal. I teach in the theater department and uh, here at Concordia, and uh, I have a, a, a research lab called the Acts of Listening Lab, uh, where we investigate many of these questions. So I'm very pleased to hear the presentations. And I'm very curious about uh, a statement that Pablo did, if I understood correctly, because sometimes my French is not the best, um, he said something about that uh, it's the, the, it's not there is not a personal story, or it's basically the, the the interest is to place the personal story in the context of a larger social story, and I'm curious to hear from the panelists what they think about the notion of responsibility and perhaps even justice, in the sense that obviously um, it's important to place uh, one's, uh, one personal story in a wider context. And then the question is to what extent by doing that, we're also somehow um, contributing to, uh, if, if not erase, at least deviate the attention from particular uh, acts by specific people uh, and who's responsible about what's happening in a specific case and how to draw attention to that because the politics of memory does something but is limited. And so Nuria mentioned the term reconciliation, but I assume that those who are responsible are not attending the exhibition. I assume that those who are responsible are not part of the maquettes. So I just want to put on the table the question of reconciliation, who listens, if only victims listen, and, and all that. So. And artist responsibility in this. In this yeah, and also yeah. artist responsibility. A little question. Mm, <laughs> Would like to uh, tackle it. Bah, je, je, je peux je peux sauter sur uh, sur uh, quelque chose qui. Bon, je pense que c'est très pertinent ce que tu dis, uh, Luis Carlos. Uh, uh, <coughs> Je reviens à cette idée de, de l'idée de, de la mémoire comme un champ en dispute, un territoire qui est négocié. Euh, pas seulement un processus, mais un travail collectif euh, qui est justement toujours dans, 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 dans un espace de négociation entre le présent et le passé, qui est toujours en train de questionner les narratives dominantes de la vérité. Donc peut-être que euh, peut-être que les responsables ne vont pas venir voir l'exposition. Je pense que euh, notre terrain d'action n'est pas là. Je pense que notre terrain d'action est justement l'activation de euh, ce dialogue et de ce champ de reconstitution de ces différentes narratives, de ces différentes histoires et de les mettre, de savoir les mettre en valeur. Je pense que c'est notre rôle en tant qu'institution culturelle et je pense que c'est le rôle bien sûr aussi Euh, euh, des artistes de pouvoir activer ces espaces, cet espace social. Um, yeah, I do agree. I think we as artists <clears throat> today, in a time where where many of the cultural, social, and political actors are not coming to the appointment, in a way. Uh, what is our role when politics are not coming to the appointment, where education is not coming to the appointment, where religion is not coming, media are not coming? What's our role? Even family is not coming. So, so, so what's our role? I think our role cannot be to provide answers. We don't have them, but we have pertinent questions that we can share. And, and I join your question, absolutely. Um, and and once again, when I think of that, I think theatrically. And my, my, my point of view is, how do I make this message pass? How do I make the audience 
connect with that, not just in order to understand or to receive something, but also to complete that. And for me, this possibility of creating a step back, linking to a common and collective story, bringing this idea of a model as a 360 degrees panopticum, panoptical to, to be able to be seen in so all these different points of view and creating once once this model has done has been done the, the the laboratory that we created later to have all these other stories like gathering this this initial one has to do with that with the with the fact of saying okay how do i tell today the fascism to to my son that has 11 years old mm -hmm. to your grandson that has not lived that how can we explain the war in Colombia today after war? How can we explain the, the, the indigenous and then the, the, the problem of all these communities living together? How do we do with that in a universe that today is dealing with image, is just dealing with another way of transmitting this truth or these realities? So, so for me, it's a kind of strategy. It's it's trying to, to, to get a, a detour in order to make, and you know perfectly well, horror in a first degree relationship cannot be seen. It's, it's, so, it's so plenty, it's so full itself that, that we need to have indirect strategies. And I think arts have this possibility of creating these shields that Perseus creates to kill the Medusa. But we need to create the reflect. If we don't create this reflect, this indirect way, we, we are going to be in a cathartic space, in a cathartic experience, and in, in the level of the testimony, in a way. And I think that we need to, to, to depass this level of the testimony in order to create a social tie, in order to, to to once again make of personal questions and topics something that is the responsibility of, of societies and not just hierarchies, not just the authorities, but the societies themselves. So by constructing this, I come from a generation where the parents thought that we had to change the whole thing in order to change the little one, and they failed. They brutally failed. So, so what do we do? How do we perhaps start changing these little universes, creating this kind of little ricochet, this kind of little wave expanding in order to, to try to, to join or to, to, to arrive to, to other spectators that, as you said, are not the people that are convinced because the convinced are, are already convinced. How do we do to talk to the others? That is, that is somehow the point. And that is a huge question that I don't have any answer yet. Thank you. <laughs> Hannah, would you like to uh, answer this as well? I think Pablo just did a fantastic job answering it. That's basically what, uh, what I would say something along those, those same, same lines. Uh, the idea of, of, as an artist, for me, is to communicate and to try and pass a message. And I see visual art arts as a way to engage people through another direction that perhaps uh, they might not respond to uh, otherwise. So that's, um, that's I, I, I like what you say about the, the indirectness. I think that kind of relates to, as I talked about, like, aestheticization as, as a strategy, sort of a, a way to start to open open the door to let people see what you're trying to say. Great, thank you. So, so we, the, the, the question was, was twofold. One had to do with artistic responsibility and the other, how do you address the, uh, the, absent, uh, the, the, the absent interlocutors? Uh, I, I think, yeah, I think you, you, you've, all, you've all addressed uh, the, this in part. Um, Patrick, 
Je voudrais juste ajouter quelque chose parce que euh, Till, euh, un des artistes qui est aussi dans l'exposition, mm -hmm. lui, il parle de résistance par con contournement. Ah, d'accord. Donc, ouais. je trouve que c'est… De quelle bon, manière? <rire> je, je pense que ça, ça rejoint euh, mm -hmm. euh, ce que Pablo vient de dire, cet imaginaire de… Effectivement, de manière très géographique, non? Euh, on, parfois on ne peut pas non, traverser par mmh. le fond, parfois on ne peut pas traverser ce terrain euh, non, de manière directe, mais il faut savoir contourner, il faut, mmh. non, il faut arrondir les coins pour pouvoir justement avancer dans cette, dans, dans, dans cette micropolitique, dans ces gestes micropolitiques qui euh, bon, éventuellement euh, changent les institutions, changent les individus, on crée cette division empathique sur les autres. Everything is not direct confrontation. Voilà. In order to bring about change, you go th go incrementally, as you mentioned. Low intensity war. <laughs> Low intensity war. Oh, what an image! Thank you. Uh, and any other uh, questions or comments from the audience uh, online or in person? Yeah. I, is there still a microphone? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, well, thank you for the presentation. Sorry, I was late. Um, well, I think those questions, we all, like, we all consciously or subconsciously have them, and we don't necessarily have clear answers. And um, my comment, which is a question in the same time, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts or um, if you have some concrete tools to um like for us uh, outside the artistic community like myself how uh, would i establish a communication or try to bring uh, like to how do we call it how do we say um bring, uh, bridging the gap between um those people with contradictory and antagonistic memories and background uh, in order to establish communication between them and at least like have an openness to come see, for example, an exhibition that talks about uh, systemic uh, uh, discriminations or racism, which some people or like most people are completely close to those kinds of discussions and like refuse the uh, the other like <laughs> and like myself who who would like to establish a certain dialogue at least between my friends uh, since i have friends in the different parties so uh, i'd like to hear your thoughts um about that well uh, of course i haven't seen the exhibition yet maybe i'll have uh, some inspiration from there i uh, I surely will, but uh, just like for right now, I'd like to hear you. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Who would like to start? <laughs> c'est 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 une question très difficile, vraiment yeah. vraiment difficile. Um, je sais pas trop comment l'aborder si ce n'est pas à revenir à cette idée de de de, de imaginer la mémoire comme un muscle qui se travaille. Euh, comme un imaginaire euh, d'une entité vivante, pas statique euh, et, et, et figée, mais justement quelque chose qu'on doit être capable d'activer euh, collectivement. Mais c'est vrai que euh, j'imagine que pour, pour faire ce pas, on a besoin d'abord de peut-être faire un deuil personnel, non de, de, de revenir et puis de... De, 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 de trépasser euh, ce deuil personnel pour pouvoir, ben justement, euh, il y a un processus, j'ai l'impression, euh, pouvoir activer ce dialogue après, non, a posteriori. Euh, j'ai l'impression que c'est très intime, très personnel, dépendamment des, des situations, des cas, mais je ne sais pas si je peux dire quelque chose, c'est qu'il faut travailler le muscle. Le Alors, muscle de l'empathie Voilà de la créativité, oui, de la résilience, résilience, du vivre ensemble, voilà, mmh. sens de responsabilité. Mmh. Yeah, and, and the sense of justice for me is very, very important as well. Uh, I come from a culture where justice does not exist. 
where justice has to do with political interests. And every time justice has a decision, we can very soon wonder who's behind, who's getting profit of that decision. So in a way, in a very sad way, but at the same time in a very necessary way, I've, I've understood somehow that these kind of acts are the ways we have to create justice, another way of justice, poetic justice. And for me, that, that, that is very, very important to not, to not to rely on the public structures to create what we need to create in order to heal some parts of the, of the tumor we have. When we cannot talk about things personally, in a family, in a society, and we put them under the carpet, sooner or later they become tumors. Personal tumors, cancers, strokes, etc., wars, attacks, it depends, socially speaking or personally speaking. How can we open the wound in order not to have any more the wound but the scar? We cannot deal with the wound. While the wound is there, we cannot create with that. It's so, so in carne viva, so in... A so, fleur de peau. Well, a fleur de peau, that, that, that you cannot. You need to, to step a bit back of that. I had the possibility in this time to, to work with people in France or in Latin America and here in North America. And, and all the time, some distance was necessary. And, and not very long time ago, I went to Mexico once again to work with the mothers of the people, victims of the violence today. And it's something that is not happening yesterday or it's happening today and it's going to be happening tomorrow. So, so you cannot statically work yet. You, you have a human responsibility, but, but you need to create these layers in order to be able to, to talk to the, to the Medusa. <laughs> You're, you're um, evoking ma many mythical figures, so the Medusa, but uh, but also when you talk about poetic justice, uh, poetic justice in, in drama speak is is basically uh, you know is it evoking someone who had it coming essentially. It's, it's the Greek harmatia, uh, the the inevitable fall. Um, so so in evoking the, this poetic justice. Uh, I, I, I see. I see the inevitable fall of, of, of those who won't basically want to uh, uh, want want to come forth and, and uh, listen to these uh, uh, testimonials, but but also experience these aesthetic uh, realities. And yet, you evoke uh, a country which has no justice. Um, these are interesting, fundamental, um, preoccupying tensions. Um, obviously, that are experienced very differently from country to country. Uh, and and we're you know we're obviously in a country where we uh, fathom ourselves to be very open-minded and, and uh, you know wi willing willing participants in, in most dialogues. Um, let's 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 see who shows up this week, uh, uh, next week, uh, and after that at, at the gallery, and and, and how these works um, affect them and potentially bring about that in incremental and. Uh, uh, incremental change uh, qui, qui passe par le contournement, mm -hmm. comme on l'évoquait. Um, thank you, Hannah Claus, uh, Nuria, Pablo, and unfortunately, our, our, our colleague from uh, Guinea could, could not be there. Thank you for space for uh, for hosting us, and thank you to the audience uh, in person and online uh, for joining us uh, yet again. I'm uh, I'm going to remind you that uh, the uh, the exhibition, the activation of the installation, but as well as the vernissage for vernissage for all of the uh, works is this Friday at yes. five. It's, so it starts at five, and the activation is going to be at six o'clock. Okay. Uh, but it goes from five to eight. Excellent. And I just want to say the last thing. I want to thank also Olivia uh, Southcott. I was saying that she she's she's a student from Concordia. Okay. Uh, that she won the prize uh, El Elmeth Mac Mac McConnell uh, 2022, mm -hmm. and she is uh, part of the co-curator of this exhibition. So uh, we are very happy to Great. have come with her in our team.
Well, thank you. And well, you know, well, well, welcome back to Concordia any any time. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, uh, thanks so much for joining us in the space or on Zoom for this conversation. Thanks once again for our panelists who, who made it online uh, with time differences and all. Thanks, Hannah. You can go to bed now. <laughs> we will uh, go ahead and, and close up uh, the Zoom and, and the live stream, which you can revisit at any time if you go to Concordia University's Fourth Space account on YouTube. It's already there. Bye, everybody. Until next time.